Hey guys, welcome to Skill Link. Most of you would be aware that pumps deliver energy to a hydraulic system by converting mechanical energy into hydraulic energy. But once the pump delivers this energy, do you know how it is utilized in the hydraulic system? Well, the answer to that is the motion of the components. The energy from the hydraulic fluid is used to move the components. This movement is achieved by using actuators in a hydraulic system. A hydraulic system can use various types of actuators that convert hydraulic energy into mechanical motion. Linear actuators convert the energy into linear mechanical motion, while rotary actuators convert the energy into rotational motion. A hydraulic cylinder is a type of linear actuator which converts the fluid power into linear motion. This linear motion is achieved by extending and retracting a piston rod by applying pressure through the hydraulic fluid or oil. Generally, there are two types of hydraulic cylinders based on their functions. The simplest type is called a single acting cylinder. Just as the name suggests, in a single acting cylinder, the pressure from the hydraulic fluid can only actuate the cylinder in one direction either in extension or retraction. To return to the normal position, such cylinders use a spring. A single acting cylinder has a port at one end of the cylinder for the entry and exit of the hydraulic fluid. The cylinder housing, also called a barrel, has a piston inside that is connected with a rod. As the fluid enters the blank end, the rod is extended outside the cylinder from the other end called the rod end. In a hydraulic circuit, the components are represented such that it clearly shows the functioning of the component without actually showing its detailed construction. This allows for easy analysis of the hydraulic circuit. A single acting cylinder is represented similarly to show the functioning. One drawback of the single acting cylinder is a spring which causes mechanical problems due to spring failure. For this reason, they are not used in applications with large stroke length. To overcome this drawback, there is one more type of hydraulic cylinder called the double acting cylinder. Double acting cylinders can be actuated in both directions hydraulically. As opposed to single acting cylinders, the double acting cylinder has two ports, one for extension and the other for retraction. You might have noticed the single rod in the double acting cylinder. This rod covers some area on the piston where it is connected. Due to this reduction in area, the pressure exerted on the piston while retracting is reduced. Such cylinders are called single rod ended type. The imbalance of pressure during the extension and retraction can be overcome by adding another rod on the opposite side of the piston. The two rods can now provide equal forces in both directions. Such cylinders are called double rod ended cylinders. A cylinder employs pressurized hydraulic fluid. This requires the cylinder to be strong enough to withstand the forces. Apart from the classification according to the functioning, hydraulic cylinders can also be classified according to their construction. The most common type of cylinder according to the construction is called the tie rod cylinder. These cylinders have four or more tie rods held together tightly by screws. Such cylinders are used for applications in medium and heavy duty conditions where shock loads are experienced. If the length to diameter ratio of the bolts in a tie rod cylinder exceeds 2 is to 1 ratio, then such cylinders are called the mill type cylinders. They are similar in construction and are used in places with severe operating conditions. That is why the cylinder tubes are welded to the flanges before finishing to ensure extra ruggedness. The next type of cylinder is called one-piece welded cylinders. Just as the name suggests, these cylinders are either welded at the ends or cast in one single piece. This makes the one-piece welded cylinders simple in design. Such cylinders are non-serviceable due to their design, but at the same time are inexpensive too. Unlike mill or tie rod type, they cannot be used for heavy-duty applications. That is why they are generally used in farm equipment where the duty cycle is moderate. The last type is the threaded head cylinder. These cylinders have the ends threaded and screwed to the tube, but they require special care. 
They are placed inside a covering so that the perfect concentricity of the bore of the cylinder with the threads is achieved and leakage does not occur. Apart from the above mentioned types, hydraulic cylinders are available in numerous other types depending on their usage. For example, plunger or ram cylinders have the piston and piston rod of almost equal size. They are usually employed in a vertical position to easily retract the load on the stoppage of oil supply and are generally seen in lifts used in automobile service stations. Telescoping cylinders are another type that provides long strokes and a short retracted length. Thus, they can be used in a short space like the forklifts or dump bodies of trucks. Another type called tandem cylinders have two cylinders connected by a single rod. They are commonly used to multiply forces in a limited lateral space, but at the same time occupy more linear space. Lastly, cylinders can also have cables attached at the end of the tube with pulleys. This allows the load to move over the entire length of the tube. Such cylinders are called cable cylinders. Well, there can be numerous types of cylinders as we have seen. Their application is dependent on the requirements of the hydraulic system and a correct cylinder for a particular system ensures the maximum work accuracy with minimum losses along with good maintainability. That's all for the linear hydraulic actuators or cylinders as called generally. We'll be back soon and until next time, bye!